Beloved brothers and sisters, really we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to be in one of his houses at this blessed time of a Friday and at the same time to share a lesson and at the same time to draw closeness to the Almighty at the same time to ponder over our weaknesses and to think of ways of eradicating them and at the same time to ponder over the obligations we have and to think of ways of fulfilling them in the most correct manner may the Almighty grant us ease brothers and sisters the Almighty has created us in a way that there comes a time very often not only during the year or during the month but sometimes during the day several times that we are found in absolute need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that we are forced to raise our hands to him meaning that he has created us in a way that no matter what we would understand as human beings we cannot survive without him subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if our lives were moving very smoothly sometimes shaitan may make us forget the fact that we are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we owe him our entire existence and every act of worship that is to be fulfilled is solely to be fulfilled for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for his sake from amongst these gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fact that when he created us right at the beginning we could neither read nor write Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed taken you out of the wombs of your mothers in a condition that you were unaware you did not have any knowledge and you did not know so as we grew we learned to read and write and so we joined the schools and the madaris and we learned both Islamic as well as secular education and this is what brings us to a university like this one may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it goodness and may he grant us all goodness and from his gifts is that every year we are tested and we go through examinations in fact not every year but sometimes we have monthly exams periodic examinations and one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we don't know whether we will pass or fail. That's a gift. If we knew we were passing, perhaps we would not call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because shaitan would have overtaken us with this false hope that don't worry, you are very intelligent, you will pass. But Allah's gift to man is even if I know I'm intelligent, I want to pass with grades that I may not be able to guarantee I will have. So I call out to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And I'm well aware that throughout the globe we are in the season of examinations. Some have just written their exams and others will be writing them in the next few days. And I seize this opportunity from this very pulpit to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of you ease and to make you pass not only in this world but inshallah in the akhirah and in the life after death as well. Brothers and sisters, remember to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only part of the solution. Although it is perhaps the major part because goodness lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we would call a tawfiq or the acceptance, the ability to write the correct things, the ability to be able to study that which is actually going to come in your examination. That is a gift that Allah will grant you. So ask Allah for that particular gift as he is the owner. But what we need to make mention of as well, man jadda wajad, whoever works hard shall reap the fruit of their work. We need to know this. It is not befitting for a Muslim not to work hard through the year. And suddenly when the exams come up, he makes dua to Allah. Ya Allah grant me success. But where were you? My brother, my sister. You need to know Al-Akhdu Bil Asbab in the Arabic language, it would mean to do that which is in your capacity to ensure that you achieve what you want to achieve and then leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Mu'min al-Qawiyyu khayrun wa ahabba ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if wa fi kullin khayr 
احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجز in the narration the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the mu'min or the believer who is strong and the strength is both the strength of your belief as well as physical strength is more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than one who is weak in his belief or one who is weak intentionally physically and when we say intentionally we are ruling out those who are weak due to sickness inflicted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah grant us all cure the hadith continues to say ihris ala ma yanfa'uk make sure that you have worked as hard as you can to achieve what you would like to achieve make sure that you are looking out for that particular achievement and from this we learn that every one of us needs to work very hard throughout the year there is no room for laziness brothers and sisters be focused why are you here what are you trying to achieve what is your goal in life and what is your ultimate aim mine and your ultimate aim should be to prepare for the day we are going to meet our maker rabbul izzati wal jalal may he make that day easy for us so in the same way we would like to pass the tests of this world which happen a few times in the year it is important that we remain focused on passing the examinations which are to lead us into paradise and for this we would need much istighfar we would need to repent a lot we would need to learn much we would need to educate ourselves who is allah what does he want from me who are the messengers what was the message they came with who am i where am i heading what am i meant to be doing these questions really need answers and these answers we are unable to do justice to them in a few minutes they would require an entire lifetime once we know these answers what is important is to spend the rest of our lives fulfilling what we have learned in terms of the answers to those questions and this is why the examination of life is not just a one-off exam that happens in the month of december nor is it a one week episode which occurs perhaps during the middle of the year but it requires an entire lifetime of fulfillment every time something comes in your direction that appears to be a test remember allah is watching you the way you react every time you feel lazy to get up for salah remember that is the examination allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and that is what he has planned and tailor made so that we can earn our paradise every time there is a sin to be committed and every time it is so easily facilitated and there is much privacy to engage in that sin without others finding out we should know that Allah is watching and it is impossible for us to do anything without the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the passing of the tests of this world might help you with a certificate that may continue for the next few years you may have to hang it on your walls and show people that you have a degree here and there but the real pride when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you your book in your right hand and then you will be able to show that book and this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as for the one who will be given his book in his right hand he will say here behold this is my book here look at this book of mine subhanallah that is the day we will have the right to be happy and to be proud of the gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the graduation in this world and in the universities of this world yes it is a point of goodness it is a sign of hard work and it is a sign of dedication and focus but believe me my brothers and sisters we need to be more dedicated and focused when it comes to the graduation on the day of Tiyama, which will grant us that certificate that will grant us entry into paradise may allah grant that to us the reason i have chosen to speak about this is sometimes we lose focus of the main aim and cause of our existence when we get excited regarding the small passings and graduations of this particular world my brothers and sisters the environment we live in today requires much restraint if we want to fulfill the pleasure of allah it requires a lot of willpower dedication focus and we need to remember 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take us away at any time. So the period of the examination is not just one hour or two that is set and fixed with a clock in front of you where you know that I have five more minutes to write. No, the period of the examination is unknown. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us away in a condition that he is pleased with us. Brothers and sisters, when we have any Islamic events, when we have any opportunity to study the Quran, when we have opportunities to study the Sunnah, never lose those opportunities. But more than that, when we have opportunities to fulfill what we've learned, never ever let an opportunity pass. And this is why the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, makes mention of seizing opportunities before they are overtaken by other situations and then we regret. So he says, seize five opportunities before they are overtaken by five situations. One of them is your time. Another is your young age. Another is your health. Another is your wealth. Another is your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the use of these opportunities whilst we are still young, whilst we still have a little bit of wealth and health, whilst we are still alive and whilst we have free time. My brothers and sisters, this beautiful place we are in, wherein we are able to practice our religion and deen is a gift that many have not been afforded. There are people, brothers and sisters of ours across the globe who are unable to fulfill their religious duties unto Allah because of lack of freedom, even in so-called first world countries. And at the same time, we have others in so-called Muslim countries who are being bombarded as we speak. It is only befitting that we remember them and we realize that the opportunities we have are far greater than theirs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. However, their test is to endure what Allah has apportioned for them. And remember, our test is also to endure what Allah has apportioned for us. Tomorrow, you may have a health matter. Tomorrow, you may have an issue of wealth where you cannot afford something you need. That all is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different from the examinations you may be writing next week and different from the examinations you may be used to in this particular university. But at the same time, those are the examinations within the university of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he make us from those who can learn. May he make us from those who can understand and may he grant us a lesson for truly brothers and sisters. If a day goes by where we have not gained more closeness to the Almighty than the previous day, we have wasted our time, wasted our lives, wasted opportunities. Imagine a person who comes to a university and as the days pass, they begin to forget what they've learned to the degree that when they enter the exam room, they don't know anything. Such a person would probably be in need of some form of medication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand the reality. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a very important point in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqullaha inna allaha khabeerun bima ta'maloon O you who believe, be conscious of your maker, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each one of you should look into what you have prepared for tomorrow. What have you prepared to present to your maker? What type of deeds have you packed in your book? And what type of deeds have you put forth to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For indeed, he is the one who is going to take record and he is the one whom we are answerable to. So brothers and sisters answer that question. What is it that is the highlight of your life? Is it the pleasure of Allah? Is it the disobedience of Allah? Is it just that you wanted a certificate for success in this world? Or was your highlight the focus on the pleasure of your maker? And was your highlight the focus on the day you will meet your own maker in a way that he be pleased with you and you be pleased with him? May the Almighty grant that to us. Beloved brothers and sisters, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that failure in this life Failure in this life does not necessarily mean failure in the life after death. 
You may fail an examination in this university of yours. That is not the end of the world. Perhaps you may be able to repeat. Perhaps you may be able to come up with better results. So never let your failure cause depression in terms of this worldly exam. But if the failure of the Akhirah is imminent, and if we have forgotten the success of the life after death, then indeed we ought to be depressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So many people sometimes when they focus on the examinations they have in this world and in the universities and schools, the minute they get a result that was not what they were looking for, they become depressed and they are then in need of medication in order to maintain the chemical balance of their minds. This, to be honest, is lack of acceptance of the decree and decision of the Almighty. Sometimes we are to blame because we did not work hard enough. Sometimes we are to blame because we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one hand and on the other hand we are busy committing adultery. We are busy committing sin. We are busy leaving our salah. And sometimes we only read salah when we have a need. And sometimes we only repent when we have a need. That is unfair. Let us not treat the Almighty like a little child, giving a sweet and getting excited. Astaghfirullah. May He forgive us. We want something, so we make amends with Him. No, He does not need us. We need Him. This is why my brothers and sisters promise Allah that we are not only asking you, Ya Allah, to grant us success. And we are not only asking you to grant us whatever we are asking. And we are not only promising to leave the sin solely connected to whether or not you give us what we are asking. But we are saying, Ya Allah, we repent to you wholeheartedly. And we are seeking success in this world and the next. And we will not go back to our bad ways and habits after the results come out. Allahu Akbar. Some people have a medical problem. The minute the test comes out all clear, they go back to their sin. But whilst they were hoping for a good result, they were engaged in tahajjud, reading salah, calling out to Allah, Ya Allah, grant me success. Some of us, the only time we fulfill tahajjud is during the days of examination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Yes, it is okay, it is correct. But remember, there should also be other days when we get up solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the hadith says, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakhai ya'rifka fi shidda. Get close to Allah, get to know Allah, become acquainted with Allah during your days of ease, and the Almighty will become acquainted with you during your days of hardship and difficulty. Brothers and sisters, we are going to meet Allah. Each one of us should look into what we have prepared for the day we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu, wa zinuha qabla an tuzanu. Take account of your deeds before they will be taken account of. And weigh your deeds before they will be weighed on the scales of justice of the day of Qiyamah. My brothers and sisters, have we weighed our deeds? Have we increased our good deeds? Have we done anything to decrease our bad deeds? Or are we getting sucked into the whirlpool of immorality that happens to be floating around us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Remember also that there will come a day when you will be talking and communicating directly with your maker, answering for every deed of yours. Whoever has done a little mustard seed weight worth of good shall see it. And whoever has done a little mustard seed worth of weight of bad shall see it. And on that day, we ask the Almighty to forgive us and grant us 